the next topic in human reproduction that is parturition, child birth. Okay. So, in NCRT 3.7 it is parturition, right. So, what is parturition called? It is also called, it is also called child birth, child birth. Now, when will child birth occur? So, the gestation, when the baby completes the gestation period inside the mother's womb, when a fully developed fetus completes, then the baby starts coming out which is called as delivery or parturition or child birth. So, we can define parturition as expulsion of the fully formed fetus. So, parturition can be defined as, how can we define it? It can be defined as expulsion of fully formed fetus from where? From the uterus. Fully formed fetus from the uterus after completing the gestation period. We can tell after completing the gestation period. Now, what is the gestation period for humans? It is roughly of 9 months. After completing 9 months of gestation period, so fully formed fetus tries to come out and the process is called as parturition or childbirth. We tell parturition as a complex mechanism involves neural signals, involves endocrine signals. So, we call parturition as a complex neuroendocrine mechanism. Parturition is a complex neuroendocrine mechanism. We need nervous stimulus here. We need endocrine hormones to the child to come out. Now, who will give the signal for the labor pains or the childbirth means? The signal for parturition, it originates from the fully developed fetus and the placenta. Now, the fully developed fetus with the placenta, they will release a factor called fetal ejection factor. That fetal ejection factor contracts the uterus. When the uterus contracts, then fetal ejection, that is called mild contraction of the uterus is called as fetal ejection reflex. From there, the process starts. So, we are telling that this is, is the signal and the signal originates by the fetus itself with the help of placenta. So, we can tell the signal for parturition originates, the signal for parturition originates by the fully developed fetus only, fully developed fetus with the placenta, with the placenta. Now, the fully developed fetus and the placenta, they release a factor. What is that factor they are releasing? Fetal ejection factor. Now, what will this fetal ejection factor do? The fetal ejection factor will contract the uterus. Mild contraction of uterus. Now, this mild contraction of uterus itself is called as fetal ejection reflex. What is this called? It is called fetal ejection. This process is called as fetal ejection reflex. Now, when the uterus has three layers, right? Perimetrium, myometrium, endometrium. Endometrium is a nutritive tissue, perimetrium is a protective tissue. The center one is a smooth muscle myometrium which will contract in response to oxytocin. Now, oxytocin will contract the uterus but without the oxytocin itself, the fully developed fetus and the placenta with the help of the fetal ejection factor contraction started. Now, this contraction will trigger the maternal pituitary. This contraction will trigger the maternal pituitary. Then the maternal pituitary starts releasing more oxytocin. So, this mild contractions, what it will do? It will trigger 
the contractions will trigger the maternal pituitary now what will the maternal anterior pituitary do it starts synthesizing or releasing oxytocin so which releases oxytocin oxytocin is called child birth hormone because this is the one which contracts the uterus now the oxytocin which is released by the mother so it goes and makes the mild contraction strong contractions so this oxytocin what it will do the maternal oxytocin makes the uterine contractions strong it makes uterine contraction strong now the uterus is contracting strongly the uterus is contracting again this is a positive stimulus for the maternal pituitary to secrete more and more oxytocin this strong uh, this strong uterine contractions again acts as a positive signal acts as a positive signal it acts as a positive signal to produce more and more oxytocin to produce more and more maternal oxytocin now mother will produce more and more oxytocin and oxytocin function is on maternal uterus so the maternal uterus makes contraction stronger stronger and wilder now because of this more and more oxytocin the uterine contractions the uterine contractions become stronger they become wilder they, they go wild okay so the uterine contractions go wild so now this is the stage where what happens uh, when the contractions are more then cervix starts dilating when the cervix starts dilating then the head comes into the path when the head comes into the path now then the labor pain it creates more pain and with that pain and pressure the baby is expelled out okay so we will see once take a screenshot then we will continue parturition the process is also called childbirth right so parturition can be defined as expulsion of the fully formed fetus from where from the uterus when after completing the gestation period this process is not a simple process it is a complex process involving neural signals involving endocrinal mechanism now who will give the signal the signal originates by the fully developed fetus along with the placenta now what they will do they will release fetal ejection factor what will this factor do it contracts it is mildly what is this process called this process is called fetal ejection reflex now this fetal ejection reflex it triggers the maternal pituitary to release some amount of oxytocin so it releases oxytocin this oxytocin comes and acts on the uterus then it makes these mild contractions strong contractions now these strong contractions have stimulatory reflexes again on the pituitary again the pituitary gland it gets stimulated more it produces more oxytocin that more oxytocin makes this strong contraction stronger and wilder now when this happens then the child start coming down take a screenshot then we will discuss yeah so we can discuss the child birth under three phases first we can tell dilation phase second we can go with expulsion phase and third one is called as after birth phase we will see the three phases now so these wilder contractions what they will do they'll dilate the cervix when the cervix dilates head is positioned now when head is positioned the amniotic fluid ruptures amniotic membrane ruptures with the pressure of the amniotic fluid the baby is pushed out the baby comes out right so i'm telling that we can divide the process into three phases the first phase is called dilation phase what's the first phase dilation phase now what happens in dilation phase who is responsible for dilation so in the previous uh, concept we discussed that relaxin is a hormone secreted only at the time of pregnancy that too in the later stages of pregnancy in the last stage of pregnancy relaxin is secreted by ovaries we studied ovary secretes relaxin that is responsible for dilation phase so we have studied that the relaxin is 
secreted <coughs> by ovary during the last phase of gestation or pregnancy now what will this relaxin do this relaxin will dilate that cervical mucus it will remove that cervical plug and it opens the cervix so it removes cervical plug and it dilates cervix when the cervix dilates then the head descends down comes to the position then the head of the fetus descends down into the birth canal into the birth canal so till here we are calling it as dilation phase now the next phase is called expulsion phase let us see what happens in the second phase called expulsion phase and which hormone is responsible for expulsion phase oxytocin is responsible for expulsion here relaxin is responsible right now here we'll tell oxytocin is responsible for expulsion phase now oxytocin released by the maternal pituitary makes the contraction stronger and while so oxytocin causes stronger and wild contractions now these contractions what do they do these contractions induce labor pain this labor pain leads to rupture of the amniotic membrane it induces labor pain the amniotic membrane which is covering the fetus ruptures the amnion membrane ruptures the amniotic membrane ruptures when the amniotic membrane ruptures amniotic fluid leaks out along with the amniotic fluid the baby expels out so along with the amniotic fluid the fetus push the, the fetus comes out when the fetus comes out umbilical cord is cut right so when the fetus comes out we can tell umbilical cord is cut when the umbilical cord is cut there's no connection between the placenta and the fetus right so when the umbilical cord cuts the baby starts crying right the baby cries now when the baby cries they open their mouth and they start taking their first to breathe fastly then when the breathe then the lungs expand when the baby cry the first breath happens and then what happens the lungs expand now till then the placenta is taking the role right now when the lungs expand then they take more and more oxygen that oxygen goes to the brain and the brain starts functioning completely so sometimes if the baby doesn't cry after the birth you know they tap the baby and they make them to cry because they want them to take oxygen that fraction of time also it might cause any mental disability if the brain is not getting that sufficient oxygen so all this comes under expulsion phase oxytocin is responsible for the expulsion phase oxytocin makes the uterus to contract stronger and wilder then it causes labor pain then amniotic membrane ruptures amniotic fluid starts leaking out along with the amniotic fluid the baby comes out through the birth canal and then the umbilical cord is cut down the connection from the placenta is now detached now the baby has to take their own breath for that the baby starts crying that's where the baby first takes the breath and then the lungs now starting expanding and oxygen will be supplied to the uh, brain and then here we tell that the foramen ovale will be sealed at this point so that the oxygen will be supplied from the heart to all the parts of the body here we can tell foramen ovale is now sealed now sometimes if it is not sealed 
this condition only called as heart uh, hole in the heart if it is not sealed if it is not sealed what is it condition called hole in the heart now what do you mean by hole in the heart so both the atria are separated by interatrial septa and here this opening is called foramen ovale now one side oxygenated blood and the side deoxygenated blood will come at birth after birth what should happen this should seal and it should join so that the oxygenated blood will not mix with deoxygenated blood but if this opening still persists after birth then mixing happens then efficiently the blood oxygenated blood will not be supplied to all the body parts so this is about expulsion phase take a screenshot then we'll talk about the third phase called after birth phase right now what is the third phase first one is dilation second one is expulsion third one is called after birth phase now after birth what happens so after the baby is released out the uterus shrinks like the way the balloon when the air is removed the balloon comes to normal this much small so like that in the third phase called after birth phase there is a sudden change in the size of the uterus so there is a sudden change in the size of the uterus since the uterus size changes all the membranes and all will detach and the placenta will dissolve placenta will break off so the placenta is lost because of this consequence placenta is lost that is why we tell human placenta is deciduous it is lost so that is why we tell human placenta is deciduous means it is broken off after delivery the placenta is broken off right in ncrt they asked a question what the uh, a doctor will inject an injection to the pregnant mother at the time of delivery what is that injection what does it contain doctor injects oxytocin to induce the pain more to induce the labor pain so there is a question in ncrt so what does the doctor injects at the time of parturition is a question in ncrt the doctor injects oxytocin doctor injects which hormone oxytocin why to induce labor pain so that the contractions happen fast and the delivery process can happen fast understood so that the contractions occur fast now we tell that this parturition is a complex process parturition is a complex process involves many hormones in crt this sentence is there in summary that during parturition hormones like cortisol what's the first hormone cortisol estrogen oxytocin are involved children this statement <coughs> is there in summary so they can ask us it's not there in the content so in the summary ncrt they mention a point that parturition is a complex neuroendocrine mechanism involves hormones like cortisol estrogen and oxytocin cortisol adrenal hormone estrogen released by the ovaries ovarian hormone oxytocin maternal anterior pituitary gland all these three help in parturition all this is about parturition childbirth in the last class we will discuss about lactation the process of 
making the milk and releasing the milk and we'll talk about the nutritional qualities of the mother's milk also so if the lectures are informative do like share subscribe to my channel thank you